Once a month or so, we invite professional dog trainer Joan Kluchin to pay us a visit with her dogs in tow. Piper, her short-haired pointer, made his Studio 4 debut last month. He behaves so well. It is now my pleasure to welcome Piper and Zumi and Joan Klucha back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hello, you beautiful hounds. Well, you're not really hounds. You're shepherds. He's a hound. He's a she's hound. She's a shepherd. Yes. She's a shepherd. Mm -hmm. I think she's a bit miffed. She is. She was miffed last time we got here as well. She's a little bit bent out of the shape of the fact that everybody's giving Piper so much loving attention. Well, look at him. He's yeah. like got in front of her. Yeah. He's turned directly to the camera. <laughs> He's been up and down and all around, and she's just like yeah, thinking, settle down. Mm -hmm. you're such a boy. Mm -hmm. yeah, stealing you know? all the attention. Doing, stealing all the attention. Doing the least amount of work and getting all the attention. Exactly. Who's older? <laughs> um, she is about a year and a half. Okay, so, so she's, she's refined. Yeah, that's right. He turns um, seven this year, and then she turns eight this year. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Do they ever scrap at home? No, they, d they do have... I guess almost like children, they have disagreements about toys, but it's more like a pushing and shoving match, but, they're, but they, they don't get into the big, uh, that no. kind of conflict anymore. They did a little bit when they were puppies, but they're, they're beyond that now. They work things out between the two of them, and, and it's just more like, okay, I want that toy, I'm going to shove you out of the way, okay, right. I give it up. Sure, and no one steals food. No, gosh, no. No, 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 no. That's, they're right. way beyond that. So they know my bone and your bone, and this yep. is my dish and your mm -hmm. dish, and don't go near it? Absolutely. When he goes, and he gets, they do get raw bones, so when they do get the raw bones, they go each, he goes to his bed, she goes to her bed. They'll each chew their bones respectively on their one mm -hmm. amount of time. When she's done chewing right. hers, she'll wait for him to finish and vice versa. Sure. When, and then they leave their beds, they ch leave the bones where they are, then they switch to each other's beds, really? and then they eat each other's bones that way. They're very respectful well, of each other's Well, he looks like space. he'd like to be on the couch. Yes, he would. He's eyeing it, isn't he? Like Great, last <laughs> on the informed couch. I think not. No. I think yeah. not. So you tell me that they're, well, I know this because I yeah. live on that side of the pond, but mm -hmm. it is a mecca for dogs. It, it really is. It is, for sure. Quite a bit, mm -hmm. yeah. It's and quite there's a dog cult of sorts. There is. You know, in, in many areas of the city. Yeah, and not only lower the mainland. North Shore, but the Lower sure. Mainland in general. Um, and, you know, dogs are, are, they're comfort, I call them like the comfort creatures. They, you come home, they are, they're that welcoming mat that comes as soon as mm -hmm. you walk in the door. They just love you, whatever they are. So I think the more that we become separate from each other as human beings with the text messaging and emails, that sort of mm -hmm. some things that we sort of are sort of growing towards these creatures which are giving that unconditional love and, and non-judgment that we used to get from mm -hmm. each other as human beings. Sure, so. and now uh, many of the downtown apartments allow dogs, yeah. big and small. Mm -hmm. It's great. If you do, if you live in an apartment, you have a dog this size, and many do. Yeah. What are some things you should think about, aside from the fact if you leave, what, whether or not they'll bark? Um, well, barking is probably the biggest issue. Uh, you know, surprisingly, the larger dogs do not bark nearly as much as the smaller breed mm -hmm. dogs. Now, that is a little bit of a general statement, but for the most part, they don't. The biggest thing is exercise, making sure that they are getting enough exercise before they are left at home. The reason dogs bark when they're left at home is because they're they're announcing their presence to the other dogs in the right. area, the sounds or whatever it is that it, that's out there. Mm -hmm. And if they're provided with proper leadership, basically they know where their place is, they know that they have an alpha in the house, that they, meaning the human being, sure. um, that when things are disturbing on the outside, they're less likely to be responsive to that. Mm -hmm. And when they're exercised well, on, they're just too tired. It's like, I'm not going to bother getting into an argument, I'm just exhausted. Right. Are there daycares who will pick the dog up really early? I believe there are some. Each daycare has their own rules, of course, in relation to pickups and drop-offs. Some mm -hmm. do and some don't, but some of them are offering right. pickup services now where they come to your home, pick up the dog, and bring it back to their daycare sure. for the day. Well, do you think a dog knows whether you're walking him or the daycare guy? They do. They're very, <laughs> do they care? They, they do, and I, I, think, I believe that uh -oh. they do. Um, <laughs> he's going to jump the couch here in a minute. No, he won't. No, somebody went in the door, and he's like on alert <laughs> now. <laughs> What are you doing, you buddy? You see, you see, boy. Zumi. Last time he was here, he's like perfect. So he fooled us because you he were did. always reluctant to bring him. Yeah, I was. Right, and now I thought he's he like caused a disturbance. Mr. Busy Pants. And now he's turning everybody upside down, including exactly. Zumi. He's normally laying down flat all the way. Thank you, and she'll be fine now. Um, but to answer your question, dogs do understand who's leading them, and a lot yeah. of times they they kind of like the daycare or the dog walker a little bit better mm -hmm. than they like their person, especially if the walker's walking them on a regular basis because they are providing right. that consistent leadership, sure. a little bit more than what they're getting at home. Okay, now if you have a dog who whines all the time, mm. always not talking to you, I mean whining. Mm -hmm. People come to visit, they whine at the person. What do you do about a whining Ignore dog? Ignore it. Always 
ignore the same it. way you, you do a whining child or mm. a whining spouse. <laughs> okay, I know how to do it. that. Just say <laughs> you just it whine stops. away. I'll drink the wine. Mm -hmm. You whine. Exactly. Okay, uh, the cult membership of dog. It's so amazing yeah. because you see these dogs now, and they have sweaters mm -hmm. and special collars, million dollar Gucci collars. Tags with their name on with all kinds name. of bling, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing that, you are in the cult of dog. Oh, absolutely, positively. And, and it's hard not to because, you know, they give so much to us. And that's sort of our way of giving back sure. to them, even though it makes us feel. He doesn't mm -hmm. care whether he's got a, you know, a, a dollar store collar on or one from, no. from Gucci, right? He's just happy. Right, um, just not a choking collar, right? That's right. You're no. not a fan. No, not now, a fan Now, uh, tell me about uh, dog obesity, puppy obesity. Mm -hmm. Too much How food, prevalent not enough is exercise. it? Is that it? Yeah, pretty much. Just like people, you know, too much in, not enough out. Um, so it's. I think people again tend to overfeed when they're puppies because they're unsure. They think because the puppy's really mm. active, they should be getting more food than they really are. Guidelines on the back of most bags are, are guidelines, but the I, but basically just sort of goes sort of how your dog feels. Sure. If you can see a couple of ribs, like Piper right here, he's on the high side right now, Lily on the chubby side. Um, you can feel his ribs. He's not happy about that, but you can no. feel his actually ribs pretty easily. So yeah. he's not he's not overweight, but he's uh, what we call high normal. It's his winter coat right on right now. So I can feel his ribs a little bit. I should be able to feel them by just rubbing his my hands just easily over top of his ribs. Zoom right. is good, even though she's got you know lots of fur. Yes. You can feel her ribs pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And um, very thin flank or like. Yeah, you can sort of see all the in. shape of his butt. You can see mm -hmm. the tuck up underneath his belly here. If it, if he looks like a sausage from the from looking down, he's too. Too so heavy. if you have the waddle dog, mm -hmm. and there are some, mm -hmm. uh, overloved, overfed, how do you put a dog on a diet the right way? Well, first of all, you want to check to make sure that they don't have any sort of underlying medical conditions mm. like thyroidism or something like mm -hmm. that, where that which is hard for them to lose weight and they won't, they'll put on weight a little bit more faster. Um, but yes, you can. There are special diets. Now, if you choose to go the route of commercial foods, they have special diets where they are lower in calories, lower in fat and a little bit more fiber, just like with people, okay. so that they can lose weight that way and feel full. Sure. But basically, it's just increasing that exercise. Right. And, uh, oh, don't and worry. The, somebody will treats. invent a dog gym. You watch. <laughs> we have dog hotels now. Cost more than our hotels. Yes. So dog gym coming to a I neighborhood near you. I wouldn't be surprised. You. I you wouldn't know? either. I wouldn't be surprised no. at all. Given our, our climate and the fact that we li like to stay indoors a little bit more, a nicer little running track with exactly. your dog wouldn't be a bad idea. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now you wrote an article recently about wolf hybrids, wolf, yeah. wolf hybrid cross, yep. which means how do you get a wolf to mate with a domestic? How does that work? Where do you um, find the wolf? In the, you let your dog into the woods or what? No, there are there are people who have wolves. Oh, okay. Um, they have them. As where That's they where they've purchased them or they got them, I I have no idea. Mm. I'm sure that there's again a little cult that sort of provides all that sort of right. stuff. But they have their wolves and they cross them with either German shepherds or huskies. They tend to be again more dogs which sort of resemble that sort of wolfy look sure. to create what's called a hybrid. And then they'll sort of in, interbreed them so that they become they look more like wolf and they will eventually have a little less mm -hmm. wolf in them. But it's like a percentage, sometimes 20% wolves, 80% dog and and vice versa. Right. So they're, but they're not for an hybrid. inexperienced dog owner. Not Can't at all. Be. No, goodness gracious, no. Um, if you like that look of that wolf, get a husky. You know, go get a Malamute, go get, get a, a purebred husky if you really want that look. But no, because they do have a quite a high level of their natural instinct in sure. them, obviously, because they're half wild mm -hmm. or maybe even more, which means that they're going to be a little bit more predisposed to chasing after things, catching things, right. and heaven forbid, eating those things that they've caught. Exactly. They're so truly beautiful, I they know. They are but, stunning, but, but and they're know what you're doing. Yeah, very, very uh, strong-willed dogs, mm -hmm. or creatures. I can't even call them dogs, but right. hybrids. Yeah. Well, uh, there were some sled dogs. Yes, unfortunately. Uh, 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 as you know, mm -hmm. at Whistler, that needed rescuing. Yeah. So if you did that, and I hope we've learned from this lesson, mm -hmm. next time there are sled dogs mm -hmm. to be given away or rescued, yeah. uh, what do you need to know about that? Okay, rescue dogs, whether it's a sled dog or from the local shelter, they're all, they all come with a little bit of behavioral issues. It doesn't mean that we have to get rid of them, all right? That's, I just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. I'm a big advocate of giving every single dog, or every single creature, a, a chance. Um, and first of all, there are going to be some issues because they've been used for a particular purpose, which is running with a pack of dogs. And for the most part, they're just tethered to a shelter right. and they get little human interaction. They might get some along feeding, maybe a little bit of playtime or grooming or something like that, mm -hmm. but they're not nearly the level of attention that these guys get at home. So there's going to ha you would have to take on the fact that they need a lot of great deal of socialization. They're not dogs which are typically fearful 
and showing fearful behavior, but they are afraid, meaning that they're uncertain how to deal with situations because they've never seen them before. Okay. They've never walked into a house before. They've never, you know, sat on a carpet before. So a great deal of patience is what's really going to be needing and guidance. Understand that even though that they have been, you know, what we consider um, treated inappropriately, um, whether you want to label that as abuse or not, that's your mm -hmm. own personal thing. But sure. I just say treated differently than I, we would our pet dogs. Um, that they still need firm leadership and guidance. You cannot baby them, you cannot coddle them because that's just going to let them go into this shell of in turn have that frightfulness turn into fear and right. they will show inappropriate mm -hmm. behaviors. But that goes for any rescue dog, of not course. just the sled dog. And some aren't purebred, some are like... Most of them are mixes. Yeah. Mixes and all of that. They're not huskies, they're not... Yeah, um, the sled dogs have been bred for a purpose, which is to pull sleds. Mm -hmm. And even though huskies have the label of that, and that's where the history came from, um, but they're, you, they want to be able to create a dog which can go for hours and go for a great deal length of time and work for a number of hours. So they've been crossed with dogs like this, German short hair pointers, and trust me, I've seen a, a team of, of German short hair pointers pulling sleds. All right? Really? I've seen like eight of these guys, and they're loving it in the snow, and they'll go for hours and hours and because they have an incredible amount of stamina and, and endurance. Yes. So they'll cross some um, huskies with German short hair pointers or, or border collies right. or or duck tollers or something sure. like that. Like which have a working dog. A working a dog. A dog who loves to work, loves to hunt, loves to be out there doing yeah. his or her thing. But oh. with the stamina, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. nice to see you. <laughs> you too. And thanks, uh, thanks, Zumi. Mm -hmm. They know it's over. They're yeah. so happy, look except at him. for him. He settled oh, in. He might just stay the night. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Joan Klucha.